What is going on YouTube? This is LA Prepper here. We are alive and well. Not that there was ever any doubt. <sighs> Slept all right. Fortunately. Um, what's going on? What is this video about? Well, this is going to be... I think we're going to make this a little bit of a quick life update and I think we'll transition into what's coming up for the next video. So let me start out with a couple of shout outs. First one is for Big Country Survival, newish channel. Check them out. Second one is for Nathaniel McBain, last name M-C-B-A-N-E. Again, these are all separate words, I think, in their usernames. And the last one is Dakota Prepper. So check out Big Country Survival, Nathaniel McBain, and Dakota Prepper. Now, these are relatively new channels, so don't expect necessarily to find anything um, to find, you know, massive amounts of content. But in the same way that y'all were nice enough to kind of send me some viewers, and that helped me uh, help my channel mature, um, I'm going to send these people some viewers. I, I literally just typed in prepping into YouTube. Um, there were some other videos that came up, but if you have over a thousand subscribers, I'm not giving you a shout out. Sorry <laughs> You you have you have enough subscribers. Um, so anyways So there's a quick shout out and also quick mention to prepper Bob uh, thumbs up on the starting of that um, workshop redesign uh, reworking of the workshop uh, good to see you make that video with the burn barrel super excited and I think you know, I don't want to speak out of turn, but um, it seemed like the look on your face, PB, when you were burning that stuff was kind of like a sigh of relief. You know, sometimes starting a project can be, um, at least for me personally, uh, starting a project is one of the harder things. Like, I'm trying to distribute some first aid stuff that I got a month or so ago. Shame on me. And... Uh, one of the first steps was just get everything, get all the, you know, I have a car bag, I have a bug out bag, and my school bag, and then like level two stuff or whatever. So one of the challenges for me was just getting everything in my apartment. Well, I have a bunch of crap in the back of my car, and my car bag, interestingly, was under the rear storage area. So I, I, I think that perhaps putting my first aid supplies now, granted, I have my bug out bag in my car, so I could open my bug out bag and get to those first aid supplies, but, and my bug out bag, 99% of the time is in my car anyways, because I'm usually with my car. But, um, getting a little bit off track, I was trying to see if Pepper Bob uploaded any new videos about, um, his workshop, and while I'm looking for that, let's go on to... Man, why can't I? Good Lord, some of these people are. Posting a lot of video. Wheat Berry Burgers. Hooples, you gotta check out Rob's Homemade Life. He's making Wheat Berry Burgers. They look kinda good, to be honest. Look like cereal pancakes or something. But let's. Let's get on to the source of this video. Just a quick update on my life. So, what has LA Prepper been up to? Um, well, school started. Super exciting. I'm taking heat convection. Convection, yes. Uh, yes, there is radiation conduction and convection, and I am taking convection the transfer of heat via fluid flow. Very interesting topic, free convection, forced convection. We're gonna talk about boundary layers and laminar flow and turbulent flow and mixed conditions. I am, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of convection, but I think the boundary layer is kind of cool and fluids are all around us. Um, whether or not you're talking about your water heater or the human body or your car or, you know, I, quick convection example I see these people doing survival videos about oh here's my survival lean-to 
and they're like camping in the snow and all these terrible conditions and I just you know a lean-to is basically gonna do shit for wind right so why is wind a big deal because wind will take a lot of the heat out of you you know if it's if it's blowing 20 miles an hour versus 10 miles an hour that's twice as much heat as the wind is gonna take out of you um, and the more humid it is the more heat it's gonna take out of you so you know, it just kind of cracks me up sometimes when I see these people like, oh, I'm going to, you know, use these two trees and make a little A-frame tent. But if it's really 40 or, you know, 30 or 40 degrees or colder and you have cold ass wind blowing all night, you're going to freeze your ass off. <laughs> you, know? you, you practically, you'd practically be in as good a shape if you just wrap yourself up like a burrito in the tarp just for more heat insulation and cover your face, you know, but, you know, what do I know? So anyways, school, taking one class, the last class, knock on wood, and unless the stars, the alignment of the stars changes. Um, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, Work-wise, my part-time work is kind of moderately busy. I do handyman stuff. Um, haven't been getting a lot of new clients, which is a little bit frustrating, although granted, I'm not doing a lot of marketing. I do Craigslist stuff. I have a website. I don't really do YouTube videos about the handyman stuff, although maybe I should. Um, you know, I'm trying not to. Sp I'm trying to spend more time looking for full-time work than growing my part-time job. But it would kind of be nice, since ironically, I'm. You know, my hourly rate for my handyman is not that much lower than what I might get at a full-time job. I, you know, it's hard to say. Engineering is kind of a competitive field, and there are a lot of engineering applicants out there. So even though I might think I'm worth X, if there's a hundred other people applying to the job, why would they pay me 10 or 20,000 more than the next guy? You know, they probably wouldn't. So, so it's a little unfortunate, but you know, what are you going to do? It's still going to be a good paying job and hopefully, hopefully it'll be something that I enjoy or at least something that I don't hate, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So I'm not going to be turning down jobs left and right, but I would prefer not to be a plumbing fixture designer. And I have applied for a job as a plumbing fixture designer, and I would probably accept a job as a plumbing fixture designer if there was no other job offered to me. But I would also rather have a job working at Harbor Freight as a tool designer. Applied to that one recently, wrote what I thought was a semi-decent cover letter. You know, I don't know. I'm always kind of, I wouldn't say casual in my cover letters, but I try to I try to kind of have a mix of things in my cover letter, sort of like a, a little bit about me, why I'm a good fit for the job, and sort of end with like a passion or an inspiring statement, like I'll work really hard, I'll hit the ground running, I, you know, something to the effect of like I really kick ass and hire me and you'll see how much ass I can kick, something like that. So. Work-wise, the part-time work is going all right. Uh, worked yesterday, in fact. Um, worked four hours for a client. Actually worked about four, I was at their house for about four and a half hours, but kind of hemming and hawing here and there um, about a couple decisions I had to make, so I just told her to round down to four hours. You know, For $12, I'd rather have the client not pay me that $12 and feel better about the value and, you know, my own honesty and integrity. I wasn't working solidly for four and a half hours. I was working for four hours solid and then probably five or 10 minutes beyond that. And then 15 or 20 minutes kind of thinking about different problems and such. Now, granted, if I'm thinking about how to do something for five minutes out of the hour, I'm not going to discount that to the client. But if I'm there for four hours and 20 minutes and I'm kind of dicking around for like 15 of those minutes, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, I'm very, I try to be very fair and honest with my clients, um, for better or worse. Like one of my sort of least favorite things to do is tell them when furniture that they ordered is damaged. A lot of these clients order furniture to have assembled and for whatever reason, shipping or getting dropped or something, little pieces get bent and tweaked. So I, one of the things I put together yesterday was a, um, little ki rolling kitchen tray and, uh, it reminds me, I gotta update my website. Um, a little rolling kitchen tray 
and a couple of the pieces were bent and you know I was still able to put it together fortunately God posted December 14th I haven't posted since December 14th on my blog what the fuck is wrong with me Jesus I'm slacking here freaking slacking oh that basketball hoop was cake too mostly cake I put a couple of pieces wrong you know invariably on about a third of the projects I do I will put something together wrong in some part of the process maybe about a quarter of the projects sometimes it's because I'm trying to kind of get the project done quickly sometimes it's the instructions are a little vague sometimes I miss something you know like one like say there's four bars and two bars are one type and two bars are the other type one bar will have like three holes and the other bar will have two holes and the only difference in the instructions is that they put a little chintzy ass picture of the three holes on one and little chintzy ass pictures of the three bars on the other you know most most of the stuff I'm doing um, all the screws and nuts and bolts are all in the same bag if they're in different bags I'm lucky if they're in a bag for each step oh my god it's a miracle um, if the parts are labeled I'm pretty lucky uh, the IKEA stuff is usually you just have to figure out what part it is based on what it looks like and that can get a little bit annoying sometimes but you know, that's why clients pay me the big bucks right so so yeah part-time work is going engineering work is going and um, for the love of God you know if you if you have any advice for how to find a job I'm certainly open to it but just don't say go get an internship um, internships are few and far between and most of them are non-paid and I'll give you a little secret the amount of work it takes to get an internship is the same amount of work as it takes to get a job so why would I want to do an intern for four months when I can be working for those four months now if I didn't have a job for, for those four months yeah it'd be better to intern than nothing but I'm gonna have a degree in three and a half months here so I'm really not looking to work for anyone for free um, paid internship yeah I would do a paid internship but work for free no, I volunteer for that. So, anyways, what else do I have to show you? And I can't um, have to cover up my uh, cover up my top secret information here. Let's see. I'll use my PayPal. Well, what can I use that won't? Here, my C's. Oh yeah, I, I gotta buy some candy. The C's candy cards. So, we have recently completed the Department of Fish and Wildlife Hunter Education Program. My name is below that, so I can't, can't show you that top secret stuff, but that is super exciting. So I am $47 and a penny away from getting my hunting license, and I actually just went to Big Five last night. I was gonna drop some of this on it, as the client money, which is probably gonna go into my Maverick Purchase Fund money rounded out to a nice even 200 but I realized that the hunting season in California is from July to June so what that means is that if I buy a hunting license now for the full price I only get a hunt for half a season now forty seven dollars is not an enormous amount of money but that's not the point the point is to pay in full for something that I only get half of Oh, that grinds my gears. I really don't like that. Um, so, so what am I going to do? Am I going to buy a hunting license and hunt for half the year and then buy another hunting license? Maybe. I haven't, I haven't, you know, haven't figured out 100% what I'm going to do on that. Um, as far as what I'm planning on hunting... Uh, the mo a lot of the seasons like deer season rabbit season stuff like that have kind of come to a close at least the fall season some of the animals have multiple seasons and I'm gonna be honest I've been doing hours and hours of research into this it's super it's frustratingly difficult like I'm gonna give you an example this is a great hunters uh, guide that they gave me Phenomenal. It's got all these color pictures of all these animals and stuff like that. But one thing it doesn't say is it, it shows you like a description of it, but it doesn't say if it's small game, if it's non-game, what the season is, what the method of take was. Like I wish they had what type of, you know, this says upland birds, right? But the method of take for American crows, like crows typically like you have to be a tenant or something to take. 
Bantail pigeons, you know, I can... Let's see what my hunting thing says here. So anyway, you know, the, the amount of hunting laws for California is just frustratingly annoying. Okay, so the following non-game birds and mammals may be taken at any time of the year and in any number, except as prohibited in Chapter 6. English sparrow, domestic pigeon, and then except as prohibited by blah blah blah, coyote, weasel, skunks, possum, moles, and rodents. So why is wolverine not on that list? Here's a picture of a wolverine. It's a small mammal. Um, you know, I don't think it's a game mammal because you can't get a wolverine tag. I haven't seen any limits on wolverines. In fact, it makes me want to like Google hunting wolverines in California. But I don't know if any of you have experienced uh, frustrating um, experiences trying to figure out what's legal to hunt and what's not legal to hunt, but it's kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. Like deer, you know, something like, and even deer is not as easy as you would think because there's a lot of different types of deer. There's pronghorn deer, there's white-tailed deer, there's all these other non-game deer, like, what was I reading about all these deer? Uh, fallow deer, which I think is, I think has to do, I don't know if that's a, hold on, I'm going to embarrass myself real quick. I don't know. Da, 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 da. Okay, fallow is a. I was gonna say yeah, breed species of deer. Um. But anyways, so. Yeah, kind of um, like muskrat. They're telling me that muskrat's a small mammal, but then I don't see anything in the California hunting laws about muskrat. So is it a non-game species? Can I take it whenever I want in any method that I want, excluding the methods that are non-approved? It's kind of frustrating, but you know, I guess that's all part of becoming a hunter. Um, so anyways, hunting. Um, did trade contact information with one of the guys who took the class with me uh, as a potential hunting buddy. So what I might do, and this I know this is going to sound a little kind of cockamamie, but I might, I might let this guy know, like, look, I, I don't know if I'm trying to buy a hunting license for full price for half the year, but if you want like a hiking buddy while you're hunting, I might kind of shadow him because a lot of what you do is hunting is kind of scouting, knowing the area, even familiarizing yourself with the animals, what's legal to hunt. Uh, the method of take for hunt, um, even things like, um, you know, running into hikers and campers and, um, you know, so I might spend the next five months. I also need a little bit of gear. I could kind of use some like boots, some hunting pants or some better outdoor pants. I kind of only have jeans and sweatpants right now and cotton's not great for the outdoors, especially when it's wet. It's pretty dry in California. Once summer comes around, um, I'm not too worried about hunting in jeans, but cotton is really not a great material for the outdoors. But I might just spend a few months and uh, tag along with him if he's so inclined and uh, just kind of get a lay of the land, you know, do some scouting, figure out where the animals are because I can take this guide with me and then say, okay, um, you know, am I seeing evidence of you know, deer, am I seeing evidence of wild hog? Am I seeing any fox or muskrats or jackrabbits or, you know, so that when I do plan on hunting, I know that this part of the forest is good for this animal. This part of the forest is good for that animal. And I was sort of thinking about doing my scouting while hunting, just because it's more fun to be kind of actively hunting. And I'm not, even though I'm very enthusiastic about hunting, I'm not like dying to go shoot an animal per se, right? Um, yes, killing an animal is part of hunting and I don't have a problem with that, but I'm not, I'm not like crazy about hunting just to go shoot animals. I, I look at it as a way of, um, as sport, as a way of helping the environment as far as uh, nuisance species like coyote and, uh, the feral hogs. But I don't know if I would, I don't, I think there's a lot of animals that I could hunt that I probably wouldn't. Like, I don't know if I would hunt a bobcat. Bobcats are kind of cool. I don't think we have a plethora of bobcats. I've seen one in my entire life, so I'm not really 
dying to go hunt Bobcat. Um, let's see, bear. I kind of like bears. I don't. I don't know if I would go hunting bears. Um, I don't know if bear meat is good eating. Having a bear rug would be kind of cool, but do I want to kill a bear just for a bear rug? You know, I don't know. I don't think I would mount the head, although that would be pretty, pretty crazy to have a big old bear head on my wall. Cougars? I don't know if I would hunt a cougar. I kind of like cougars. Deer? I'm not too worried about deer, ethically or morally speaking. There's a lot of deer out there. They're they're dumb as a fucking post. They're really, you know, they're not super bright animals. Um, so no love lost if I was going to go hunting deer. Pigs? Definitely not worried about hunting pigs. Jackrabbits? Badgers? I don't know, I kind of like badgers. Fisher? Do you know what a fisher is? Have you ever heard of a fisher? Kind of looks like a cross between a pine martin and a mink or something. I don't even know what family of species the fisher's in. Muskrats, they're kind of... Muskrats actually kind of do an amount of damage. They reproduce... They're, I want to say they're a rodent. I would definitely kill a muskrat, although I don't know if they're good eating or not. But California has some certain laws about uh, making appropriate use of what your... Uh, what game you kill. Now, I don't know if that's only for game, animal, game animals or non-game animals, but more stuff to research. Skunks? I could hunt skunks. I know, I like skunks. Skunks are cute. Squirrels? I would hunt squirrels. There's plenty of squirrels. They also have plague. Some of them, anyways. Ring-tailed cat? Never heard of it. Like, I would be amazed if I saw half these creatures in the wild. You really don't see, at least I haven't recently seen a lot of interesting wildlife in the wild. Um, of course, I don't go hiking a ton, but... So anyways, I'm not going to bore you guys going through the whole, uh, the whole thing here, but... Man, there is a lot to learn about hunting. Where to hunt, how to hunt, what the animal is. You know, do you know the difference between a white-winged dove and a morning dove? And that's interesting, that's morning as in sad morning, not morning as in good morning. Wanna hear my dove call, YouTube? All right, let me get some coffee, you ready? Not bad, huh? Watch out, doves, watch out, morning doves, I'm coming for you. Speaking of doves, if I was going to be, according to the class, if I was going to be an ethical hunter, I would not shoot, I would only shoot doves when they're flying. I wouldn't shoot them in a tree or on the ground. Now, I think that's a very interesting idea. Um, I'm not sure if the bird cares where it gets shot. Um, getting shot's probably not fun for a bird in most cases. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think hunting, do you think shooting a pigeon sitting in a tree is unethical? The, the guys running the hunting class seem to think that shooting a pigeon in a tree was unethical, but I feel like if you're going to kill a pigeon, if you kill it on the sidewalk or if you kill it in a tree or if you kill it flying, and the guy was saying like, well, I want the animal to have a chance. Well, if you're coming at a pigeon with a 12 gauge shotgun, I think it's already decided that the pigeon doesn't have much of a chance. So, you know, I don't know. What do you think about that, YouTube? And all these cool owls and falcons. I love falcons. Falcons are pretty cool. I wouldn't... I, don't, you, I mean, you can't shoot birds of prey, but even if you could, I wouldn't. So, hunting. Hunting is going to be coming up in the future. And, you know, right now I just have the 22 and the 9mm, so that's kind of... You know, it's a little bit tricky to say like what you could hunt because I could hunt jackrabbit with a 22 but I can't hunt in Angela's forest I can't hunt rabbit with a rifle or a pistol I could theoretically hunt coyote with a 9 millimeter but only at really short range because I can I can't take an ethical shot more than about geez maybe 10 yards 
you know, 10, 15 yards, probably not even 15 yards, probably 10 yards with my C9. Um, my recent trip to the range was not, it, it, it was enlightening, but um, yeah, the accuracy is not quite there at 15, 20 yards. So it'd have to be five, 10 yards. And the chance of me getting five to 10 yards within a coyote is not super high. In fact, it's very, very low. But nevertheless, I am legally able to hunt coyotes with a pistol, so so that's part of it. But with the 22, you know, I can't... It, it's kind of a small caliber to take a coyote. I mean, people have taken coyotes with a 22. Um, you know, I, I, am, I am a firm believer in you know, taking the quarry ethically and dispatching it quickly. So would I take a hundred yard shot on a coyote with a 22? No, I wouldn't. Would I take a 20 yard shot? Well, I guess it depends on the situation. Um, a shotgun is generally considered the more common, a shotgun or a higher caliber rifle, rifle is considered a more appropriate weapon to take a coyote with. And I don't have a shotgun yet. And I don't have a high powered rifle yet, although I am working on both of those. Um, in fact, Big Five has my favorite Maverick on sale for two. What is it? Two forty-nine right now. It's funny. It was normally two eighty-nine. Um, even Google knows that I want to go here. Yeah, normally it's two eighty-nine. It was on sale for two thirty-nine. Then they changed the sale to two forty-nine. So, anyways, hunt. So that's a little update about hunting. Not gonna go hunting this weekend, although I could have. I, I was ready to buy the license. She was punching the stuff into Fish and Game, and then she said, oh, it's good till June, or good till July, or wait, probably June 30th, and I was like, what? I just, like I said, you know, it's not the money so much, I just, you know, if I could pay like three quarters of the price of the license, or if I could get like a $10 discount or something, but to pay full price and only get half a product, not a fan, not a fan of that. And since jackrabbit and boar hunting is year-round, it's not like I'm up against a deadline on the season for that. So, I mean, if I get the itch to go hunting, you know, if I just, one Thursday or Friday, feel like, oh, god damn, I gotta go hunting, I'll just go buy the license, not a big deal. But, but until then, you know, I try to kind of not impulse buy stuff. I'm really a big believer in savings. My personal savings is up to a nice, even number right now. My... Maverick savings is about to be up to a nice even number, so I'm kind of of the opinion that, you know, hiking boots and camping gear, I mean, I was, my wish list for camping has like $400 of stuff on it. I was actually kind of strongly thinking of doing a GoFundMe page just for camping stuff, and I feel, you know, I feel, feel a little sheepish about that, um, just because I'm really not the type of person to ask for stuff, I mean, I know, you know, I was asking, um, Hoopals was kind enough to generate that first aid stuff, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally ask for something like that, except first aid supplies are kind of like so expensive that even if I should, as a prepper, own a hundred more dollars worth of gauze and tape and occlusive dressings, it's just not something I'm going to go buy. Not because I don't believe I should have it, but it's just kind of too much for me to chew off, uh, just kind of like too expensive, you know, kind of the same thing with like a nice folding knife. Should I have a nice 40 or $50 folding knife? Yeah, probably. Am I going to go buy a 40 or $50 folding knife? Not for a while, not for a long while. I'm perfectly happy with a $10 fixed blade, you know, good enough for what I need. And since California really doesn't like you to conceal carry knives, and you can kind of only open carry knives. Um, I was reading some interesting stuff recently about how a knife clipped in your pocket is sort of open and concealed carry at the same time, depending on you know the legal interpretation of it. So you can't really fully open carry a folding blade because you kind of always have, like maybe if you clip it backwards, but folding blades really aren't designed to be clipped onto the belt. So I would personally rather open carry a knife than kind of halfway open carry a knife and have someone say, oh, well, that's sort of kind of concealed. You know, I don't know. So, um, but yeah, camping gear, I kind of need a chunk of camping gear. 
Um, let's look at some stuff that I'm thinking about picking up real quick. Quick car update too. I finally got my check engine light off. Knock on wood that it stays off. Bought a Denso sensor, an oxygen sensor, which I think was a Denso sensor. It said Denso on it. Oh, $47 for this hunting license. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what LA Prepper is looking to pick up. Oh, this tripod's getting in my way. So, we have hunting license, Maverick 88, it's a shotgun, water filter, gravity type of bag, solar panel, camping stove and fuel, cooler, camp shovel, hatchet, multi-tool, 80% lowers, folding wood saw, an axe, and oh, this is like a hinged wood saw and that's like a buck type wood saw. So, and you'll notice the total there, $1,000. So I, you know, do I need all this stuff? Could I go camping tomorrow without all this stuff? Except for the stove and the cooler, kind of the highest camping priorities, but shovel too, technically, if you have an open campfire in California, you have to have a shovel handy. Do I need the shotgun to go hunting? No. Do I need a water filter with a gravity type bag? No. I have a life straw. You know, that's at least good enough for me. And if someone else is dying of thirst, they can drink my spit up water, I guess, which is kind of gross. But... <laughs> Do I need a solar panel? Do I need the stove? Kind of should get the stove. Do I need a cooler? Well, if I'm trying to pack the meat out cold, kind of, yeah. Um, camp shovel, kind of, you know, so this is like, Exclude, and I need to separate my wish lists into kind of different categories, but this is this is the challenge that I have in like, if anyone's ever wondering, oh, LA Prepper, why don't you go camping more? Why don't you just buy a hatchet? Why don't you just go buy a multi-tool? Why don't you just go buy a folding wood saw? Well, I could, but you know, a thousand dollars worth of gear, even though I could afford to go buy it right now, it's I'm just not ready to bite the bullet on that yet you know I I haven't haven't always been terrible with money but I've also worked full-time and made more money in the past so now that I'm not really making tons of money or at least tons of extra money I get paid well for the handyman work that I do but it's not enough to cover all my bills so so the point is I'm just not the type of person to go out and spend 500 bucks on something or go to Big Five and drop $200 on all this stuff, which I'm sure I could all find a Big Five. I even got some funds from Santa for Christmas that I could, you know, go out and buy all this stuff, but I like to really earn it, you know? I like to, nothing makes me feel better than saving up for something and working for it. Um, and then finally saying, okay, this is money I've saved up specifically for this purpose. I'm not eating into any other part of my budget, like the Maverick. It's going to cost, you know, about $300 with taxes. Cause it's like going to be 239 plus it's going to be 239 plus $35 DROS and then 239 time. Darn it. Plus 239 times 1.0, 9% so sales tax. Yeah, it's gonna be like $295, basically $300 for that gun. I'm two thirds of the way there right now. So the next job, if I can make $100 on the next job, there's a chance I will come home, get my Maverick envelope, drive over to Big Five and say, boom, here's 300 bucks for a shotgun. Once it's on sale, has to be on sale. It doesn't have to be on sale, but I'll say, I mean, what am I going to save? So let's see, 289 minus 2 plus 289 minus 239, 50. Yeah, that's an easy one, I guess. Uh, I thought it was going to be a weird number. Uh, so 55 bucks. So I'll save $55 by buying it on sale. I think that's worth waiting. Um, so that about wraps up my quick little update. 
Things are going well. I've got a whole Sunday to myself. No work yet, although I would work if I got some work. Let me check my email real quick. You know, I was at uh, 7... I'll close with this. I was at 7-Eleven last night picking up something. And... Uh, the girl in front of me, the young lady in front of me, was talking to the guy who, uh, the checkout guy, or the, the not the cat, the, not the register, but the employee, the 7-Eleven employee. Something about, oh, you know, what day do you have off, and you get Tuesdays off, and do you like Tuesdays off, and all that stuff. And he said something to the effect of, no, I'd rather be working. And she was like, what, would you rather be working? And he just smiled. He, he's a cool guy. He's always in a good He's always in a good mood, and he's just got this sparkle in his eyes. Seems just seems like a really cool freaking guy. And I understand what he means, right? You know, kind of like one of his uh, previous co-workers, who, another guy that I kind of talked to on the regular, who was telling me about all his real estate holdings. And he's talking about all these homes and apartments and buildings and other countries that he owns and all this stuff, right? Not like super, super rich, but rich enough that he doesn't have to work. And I said, look, what are you, what are you working at 7-Eleven for? You could just be like managing your real estate assets. And he said, well, it's another, you know, 800 bucks a month or whatever. Just, you know, more, more income to add to that financial security. So I thought that was, you know, that's kind of, it's a different mentality. There's definitely more to life than work, and I don't believe in working as much as you possibly can necessarily. But if you're young or youngish, or maybe if you're not young, doesn't really matter. Um, if you have the capacity to work and make money, and it's not going to be a giant toll on your family or your body, and maybe even if it's going to be a little bit of a sacrifice, um, work, you know, work, make some money. Not just to spin the hamster wheel, but make money to improve your life. Make money to buy property. Make money to pay off your bills, to be more sustainable, to go more off-grid. Um, don't just work to pay cable bills. You know, working so you can upgrade to HBO is not a good reason to work. Working so you can buy some land and raise some chickens, that's a good reason to work, at least in my opinion. So thanks for watching YouTube. If you have any thoughts of what I should work on today, maybe go for a hike. I don't know. Go exploring. Go start some fires at the uh, local... Uh, start some fires. Go practice making fires at my local, I don't know, park in the grill or something. I really don't have a lot of places I can practice making fires locally, unfortunately. But anyways, YouTube, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And coming up next, 10 unique jobs for post shits hits the fan that you can start out of a Harbor Freight catalog. That's right, it's gonna be fun. All right, see you next time, bye.